Uh, and uh, we might have a presentation. I don't want to look like... I'd like to uh, welcome everybody here. Dunk of shame, darling. Dunk of shame. For those on the podcast, I'm holding a microphone kind of innocuously, so that's what's going on here. Uh, we will have a, a PowerPoint or a Google Slides presentation if, um, if we get a cord that uh, helps facilitate that. But it might just be us and paper. You guys all right with that? Good answer. Okay. Um, so I, I don't know if you guys have put this together or looked at all that Fusion Book 2, um, but uh, the workshops are reflecting chapters in that book. Um, Brent mentioned this a little bit earlier uh, in the, the general session, but sitting down with a bunch of children's leaders in the area, um, they just went through and, and, and made a list and said, okay, hey, what do we what do we really want to instill in the culture of Northwest Children's Ministry and children's ministry nationally? Uh, either it's the stuff that's maybe being missed a little bit or is not being done or could just be done better. And so each of these chapters um, reflects uh, in book one is more over our <laughs> Nick Calum is he made it there, ladies and gentlemen. Late but not out. Um, or what, what can we do? The book one is like overarching themes, and book two is starting to get a little bit more specific. So I don't know if you noticed that in uh, workshops that you went to in the earlier labs that you went to in the earlier session, but pretty specific stuff. So we are talking about leading a parent meeting, the who, what, and how of leading a parent meeting. Um, and, and I tell this story. Anybody looked at the book, book two at all? Okay, because it just like was released like six hours ago. So, so what I'm going to talk about, if you read it, you'll go, wait, I've heard all this before. Oh, because Dan just talked about it in the workshop, what he talked about in the chapter. So I, I start in there with the story of when I started as, a, as a, a lead children's pastor, like they handed me the keys, like even literally handed me the keys. Mark was one of the kids in the children's ministry. How old am I? He has a mustache, the kid. Um <laughs> But I, I'm 21 years old, and I had this mom come up to me kind of like really cautiously, awkwardly, and she said, Pastor Dan, um, I, I want to ask you something. Um, my daughter's been asking a lot of specific questions, and um, what, how, should I, how and when should I start telling my daughter about sex? And I was like, <gasps> I was 21 years old. I was single. Like, I don't know. I didn't have kids. I wasn't married. None of these things. So I just tried to hold it together thinking, why are you asking me? Right? Why on earth are you asking me? And something I realized in that uh, instance, and this is your, uh, um, your first three blanks here, this, this first part of the presentation, your voice matters to parents. Um, they want to hear from you despite what we often think. Even if we are naive or inexperienced in a lot of ways, parents don't have everything figured out either, right? Like there's no class required for you to get a baby, right? You like they give it to you for free. And, and in a lot of ways, you are the only childhood expert that exists in the life of families in your church. Now they have, there's teachers and there's preschool leaders and there's, all, there's other people, but they probably have more trust in you than they do in a lot of those people because you're the church leader, the spiritual leader, the pastor, your voice matters. Those three things there are you're an influencer to kids and maybe the only positive influencer in the lives of a lot of kids. You're an influencer to parents and your influence will have eternal impact, will impact eternity, just in case you didn't feel the weight of this enough. So here's what I want to do to start off... Um, this, uh, this session here, uh, group up with people around you, two, three, four people, no more than four, and answer these two questions. What's the point of meetings? Why do we have them? It's basically the same question. What is the point of meetings? Why do we have them? So, so take about three minutes, answer that with people around you, and then we'll come back together. You uh, podcast listeners uh, should know that uh, right now the group is answering the question. What is the point of meetings, and why do we have them? Feel free to answer that question with your own um, group you're listening there with, or um, even grab a pad of paper and answer that question on your own. What's the point of meetings? Why do we have them?
All right. Do we have a, a definitive list? Jordan, the wet, the wet hat is tipping you off, man. You left. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so what are, what are some answers we came up with? Why do we have meetings anyway? What's the point? <laughs> Answer from Nick Calum was snacks. Someone else. Communication. Communication. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Synergy. I like that. Yeah. More communication than can be in an email, interaction, buy in. Yeah. Relationship. Okay. Yeah. Building trust. Yeah. And I like the, the idea that, you know, what a meeting, the contents of a meeting could be in an email. But all, none of these things could be. You can't have snacks in an email. I mean, that's right. That's right. So, uh, I mean, we could talk about this and get an answer from everybody. But all these things that we said, do we want this with our parents, uh, our, our mom and dad, but also uh, the parents in our church? Yeah, do we, we want to have synergy. We want to have buy-in. We want to have communication. We want to have snacks with the parents in our church. Absolutely. Um, that's... I, I think when we come down to this idea of a parent meeting, we want this, so we should have it. And, and one thing that I, that I point out in our, our book chapter is if you have the time in your schedule to have a sit-down, face-to-face dinner at home with every family in your church, you don't need to do this, right? Like, But probably that's not reality, right? You don't have the opportunity to sit down face-to-face -face time on a regular basis with everybody in your church, every mom and every dad in your church. So let's talk about some benefits of having a parent meeting. Uh, it lets you have some of that face-to-face -face time with parents. Can you see this at all? A, a little bit? It's like an eye test is the, this projector thing. Um, it, it, you, it lets you have some face-to-face -face time with parents, uh, and that's important. It's important for that relationship. It's important for that buy-in. Um, it invites parents to partner with you. So hopefully if it's conducted well, having a parent meeting uh, is going to invite some relationship and, and some like... Uh, uh, you want to turn out the lights? There we go. No, it was there we go. I like this. I like this feel. Is there any way we could go in halfway in the middle? Like, uh, anyway, I'll just keep going. I, I, yeah, one, or just be in the dark. There we go. That's it. That's it. Um, it invites parents to partner with you. Hopefully you get some kind of reciprocal relationship that it's not all, hey, parents, let me tell you what I'm going to be doing with your kids and you, what you're going to watch me do, but that there's actually an invitation to partnership, which I think we neglect the fact that parents want that. They want to be invited uh, to partner with what the church is doing. Um, it lets parents hear what you're doing and why. What you're doing and the very important why you're doing it. Because if you take a critical eye, take a look at what you're doing with a critical eye, and imagine you don't know why you're going to do any of this stuff, there's some ridiculous stuff that children's ministry does. Absolutely ridiculous. Take camp, for example, right? If you know why you go to camp, that's an awesome ministry. That's the heart of Jesus right there. That is a non-negotiable. Every kid comes to camp. If you don't know why you go to camp, <laughs> that's ridiculous, right? You're going to a, a where with a whole bunch of other kids and you're like putting them in cabins together with like not enough changes of socks and people who have never taken care of kids before are going to be watching them. And like, it doesn't make any sense unless you know why. Uh, it builds enthusiasm about what your ministry is is doing which is super important enthusiasm uh, is a fuel in the tank for your ministry if parents are enthusiastic about it the kids will be enthusiastic about it your staff your pastor will be enthusiastic about it but one word of caution or warning here i'm going to say that even though all these things are great right like and yes we want to do this this is awesome i want all those things let's do a parent meeting every month no. Yeah, right. You want to use these types of meetings sparingly. Why should you why why do you need to do this sparingly? Might be obvious, but why? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's like I, you talked about this last time at the meeting. Why did I come again? Right? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes, it becomes another thing in their schedule. Yeah. Yeah. You want to sustain it. Yeah. Keep them from, and you, and you want there to be some kind of anticipation. Like, don't miss it. It's coming up. So I'm going to suggest uh, twice a year at the most. Once a year for me, that's the sweet spot. Uh, you can kind of build it into people's seasonal calendars. You may have enough going on in your ministry that twice a year is more necessary, but do them sparingly. Okay, here's another question for discussion. Uh, and, and maybe uh, same groups, different groups, whatever you want to do. What, what do you wish every parent in your church knew? And what do you wish every parent in your church would do? Maybe it's the same answer. I don't know. Go ahead and talk it over. So uh, a little update on some of the things that have happened uh, last since the last break. Um, a guy came in with a rain all over his hat, and I teased him because it was obvious that he left for some reason. Um we're answering the question, what do you wish parents in your church knew, and what do you wish every parent in your church would do? Looks like people are having trouble with that question. Someone's just noticed me talking into the microphone, and they're a little creeped out by it, so um, I'll wrap up for that reason. All right, about 30 more seconds. I've just given the 30-second warning. No one seems to be really paying any attention to that warning. All right, we ready to bring it back together? Hopefully uh, you got a chance to say something. What, what are some answers that we came up with, with for one or both of those questions? Craig, did you talk the entire time? Okay, but it didn't, ha yeah, okay, but you did. Uh, okay, well, maybe some others in Craig's group could share since they didn't get to share in the group. <laughs> what, what do you wish every parent in your church knew, and what do you wish they would do? I wish every parent would get engaged. Get engaged. Okay, what do you mean by that? Um, become uh, actively involved with uh, uh, their children's uh, spiritual okay. education. Okay, so pastor at home, that kind of yeah. thing, parents, pastor at home. Yeah, okay, awesome. I'm I am taking either right now, but I think you're what you're going getting a do, right? Like what what with yeah. Maybe you wish they knew they should. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that they could and they should. Yeah. Yeah. I have to say Tammy brought up a great thought. what if what if the kids do family don't know the Lord? Yep. Not all the families that are gonna be in this meeting know the Lord. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's good. And and for the recording too, not 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 making assumptions about what parents already know, uh, but maybe that wish that every parent knew that Jesus loved them and and uh, wanted to be their savior, right? Like that's a very baseline. We wish every parent knew that. Anything else? Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. The parents would arrive on time. Dropping them off. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. And it messes you up. And, and not to mention what the parents have missed, too, in, in their part of the church. Yeah, don't, and don't you, uh, do you have this happen where you have kids that won't integrate socially and their parents are like, I don't know why he doesn't make any friends. And you go, if you would show up before we started, it wouldn't be so awkward when they came in. It's your fault. Nick. Uh, one thing we wish every parent knew that's not in our group is that we would uh, be encouraging them to pursue their primary spiritual influence. Yeah. Yeah, the church isn't the primary spiritual influence. Awesome. When, when you start to answer these questions, you look back at this idea of a parent meeting, and then you, you start to feel that burden of going, well, we got to do this, right? We, 
because there's so much I wish every parent would kn that knew or would do. And I love the, the uh, spectrum of answers we got from like parents being the primary pastor of their children to don't be late, right? Like there's some very overarching uh, themes to very specific themes. So uh, what, what do we include in this meeting? I'm going to throw out some ideas and, and it's your meeting, it's your church and your ministry. But I think that uh, first and foremost, you need to include your mission and vision for ministry. So at my church, where I'm now at Creekside Church, uh, one of our core values is that parents are the primary pastors of their kids, right? That's a great value only if parents know that, right? If they don't know that, they're just keep wondering, why don't we do very much stuff, right? Like, well, how come there's not a lot of events and midweek services and uh, like all... Because in order to understand the model for ministry, they have to understand that purpose. If you don't have a mission and vision for ministry that you can clearly articulate, that's job one. Say, why are we doing what we do? What are we here for? And what could I inspire um, parents with? We, in, our, in the Foundations of Children and Family Ministry class I lead at Northwest, Brent, my man Brent back here, and uh, the other students just presented their own mission and values for ministry. I got so excited for every one of those presentations. I was like, I want to volunteer for you. I love it because to hear a heart and passion, right? Like that's what it's all about. Uh, uh, values and culture identity, those things that you want parents to know and do, those can reflect like this is what we value, but you're also building a culture within your, in your uh, uh, kids ministry and parents arriving on time. That's a cultural ideal, right? And why parents show up late might be a variety of things. Maybe it's a very difficult, long process to get in. So they think they've arrived on time, but by the time the kids actually get there, they're late. Some of it is uh, the uh, influence of, of other cultures that are just, you know, hey, it's island time kind of cultures uh, that influence the, this area. Uh, and some of it is uh, honestly like, I'm going to church to check it off the list, right? So if grandma asks if we went to church today, it doesn't matter if I showed up 45 minutes late, we came, right? Like Catholic grandma is going to ask us, did you go to church? Yeah, yeah, I came. It was after they took the offering, but we came. Um, so it's building that culture is, is uh, an important thing you can do. An overview of your ministry program, okay? In my uh, time in leading children's ministry, I was never, I never ceased to be amazed at the parents like core parents that didn't know everything we offered for kids ministry, like didn't know we had a Wednesday night service, right? Like they'd gone there the church for years and they didn't realize that we met midweek because, you know, you have that like small window where you're paying attention for like two weeks and then you're not paying attention anymore. Right? And you just figure, well, I know everything about this church. So I'm not paying attention. I'm not going to go to the website anymore. I'm not going to look at the read the announcements anymore. Like overview what you're doing and again, why you're doing it. Some important dates. Um, one thing that I'm realizing as a dad of like real people now, not that toddlers and babies weren't real people, but they didn't have calendars. Do you know what I mean? Like now that I have like elementary schoolers, for five people to juggle school events, church events, sports, speech competitions, bake sales, all this stuff, we can do it on one condition that we have advance notice, right? If there's something that didn't get advance notice, it kicks the whole system down, right? Not just we can't make it to that thing, everything is thrown off. So if you're the monkey wrench in the system of your family's schedule, they're gonna figure that out and they're gonna not like you or stop coming to your stuff. But if you, if you can give them, if you can sit down in September and say, hey parents, let me give you the entire year's dates. Well, guess what? You're gonna get to trump the soccer tournament for once, come on. Okay, maybe that's reaching a little far. This <laughs> soccer tournament's like, uh, yeah. Um, and, and volunteer opportunities. Look at this. You just outlined your mission and vision. You're building culture and, and values. Your overview. If you can't draw in parents at this point, stop drawing. I mean, this is your opportunity. And, and let me say this too. This is not manipulation. This is not like we're inviting you here and we're going to feed you and, and have uh, th this nice thing to to set the hook right like i think i truly believe like every parent should be volunteering in our ministry that there's not anything they could be doing better with their time except maybe praying right like that that to impact the kingdom right this is important if you believe that invite them right invite them along to to serve with you um uh other things i don't want to make this all about me and what i think other things that you would say yeah this should be included in that parent meeting where we've had a good success with this Food, yes, and we'll talk about that for sure, yeah. Yeah. I think what you're, what you're articulating is a really good example of the kind of future 
Yeah. Yeah, talk about the curriculum, what you're teaching. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Clear expectations of what's required from them. Good. Yeah. Yeah, this is the expectation. This is what we want you to do. Oh. Yes, stories. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Um, let's keep moving here. Here's what should not be included. These are important. Technical difficulties, okay? And I'm saying this from painful, painful experience. This is your one shot, right? If you're doing an annual parent meeting, you want to get everybody like impressed. So you're probably going to want to include some cool video that you not just saw on YouTube, but actually produce like with your own team, right? And like, or, or you're going to want to be like uh, this, this uh, you, you want to make it over the top, i.e. complicated, right? If that stuff that you thought was going to be awesome doesn't work, everybody in the room is going to feel sorry for you, right? They're on your team, but they're also going to say, this leader is disorganized, right? Uh, a, a smart guy told me, um, people don't remember what you said. They remember how they felt when you said it, which is not entirely true because I did remember that, that he said, <laughs> but I felt awesome. <laughs> the, the point is, though, it doesn't matter what you're saying if everybody has a knot in their stomach and they're queasy because you're failing so bad, right? Like, oh, this is painful. And, hey, do you want to volunteer? Uh-uh. Because I don't want to get sucked into your mess. You're obviously, and, and it's amazing. Like, do you get the flop sweat when the video's not working and then you just can't say anything the rest of the time? No? Okay, just me. Um, don't, don't make sure that you run through it. And if it's, uh, there's a chance, a 10% chance it's not going to work, dump it. Keep it simple and keep it working well. Excuses. Don't come and say, we were going to have a calendar of all the dates this year, but. We didn't quite get them. This printout was supposed to be in color, but it, just own what you got, right? Just own what you got. Because if you come with excuses, they might have been really great aspirations you had. And hopefully you do have a ton of things that you were hoping came and you didn't get done because that means you're dreaming big, right? But don't make excuses because that just communicates, I'm not organized. I don't know what I'm doing and my plans don't succeed. That's what I hear. Uh, and boredom, okay. Don't include boredom. There's a ton of stuff you could talk about, but don't bore people, right? Even when you're talking about dates, like if it starts to get tedious, just go, all the dates are here. You see that, you know, email me if you have questions about it. Make it, make it fun. Make it succinct. Make the whole thing people having a good time. Um, and, and you might even want to include some things uh, just, to, just to mix it up a little bit um, uh, to keep people from getting bored. Okay, how about when? This is important, right? The all-important when. Avoid some wrong times, okay? There's no right time to do this, but there's a lot of wrong times. It's like baseball manage, managing a baseball team. You can't be a good manager, but you can certainly be a bad manager, right? Like, there's no perfect time, but there are some bad times. Uh, busy seasons or holidays, okay? So if you're planning this from now until January 3rd, are all out. Don't try to do this, right? Just, just don't. Also, um, if there's a big women's ministry event, it's on you to avoid that women's ministry event, right? Because you're going to lose that battle, right? All the moms are going to go to that, and they're going to be tired the next week, or they're going to say, I just need a weekend home. Try to avoid stuff like that if you can, uh, other church events. Also, avoid short notice, right? Again, short notice just says, I'm not prepared. I don't plan ahead. So if you are able to put this on your calendar now, like the 2016 calendar, even 2017 calendar, um, that's really good. Uh, here's, here's some uh, natural building times that I try to think in. For me, it's all about September, January, and May. I don't know exactly why, but in September, everybody has just flipped this page from summer to school, and they're starting to think, how can I get involved? How can we connect more with church? Wh whatever that might be. The downside of September for me is when do you have to promote it? August, the worst <laughs> month in church. 
So maybe late September, but you don't want to get too far into the fall. January, same thing. Everybody, January 1st, they're starting to think about new year, new thing. For, they're going to maybe be an awesome family. And when you talk about being the primary spiritual leader in your kid, yes, I'm in because that's, yes, that's what I want to do. But again, you don't want to have that in the bulletin during Christmas. It's not going to work. And May, that kind of is a, a same kind of idea. Like we're transitioning to the end of the school year into a new one. You know your own church calendar, but if it was me and I was telling you when to do it, I'd say pick one of these uh, events. September's my favorite because just just when to do it, I don't know. Yeah, how about getting parents to come? Okay, here is the clincher because you can do everything right. If you don't do this right, you can flush the whole thing down the toilet because if three parents come, that you will not communicate what you want to communicate to the, the, the church and the three parents who come will feel like suckers, right? They'll go, you got me. You got me, Pastor Dan. Mm, I didn't know this was one of those things that you weren't supposed to come through, but you got me. <laughs> and they're not going to come next time. So uh, spread the word early. Make sure that, that they know about it well in advance, even if it seems ridiculous. Uh, you know, there's a certain segment of moms in your church. I say moms here as a really fair stereotype, I think, but there is not such a thing as too early, right? Like if you were to say, hey, I'd like to invite you to our parents' meeting. It's going to be September 13th, 2018. They won't blink an eye. They'll start putting it in their calendar, right? Because that's how they roll. They're like, oh, you know what? I have a knitting group that day, but I think I can move that. Um, utilize influencers. Are there parents in your church that all the other parents think are cool? Yes, there are. If you said, no, you're wrong. That high school thing, it never really leaves. We just don't talk about it anymore. <laughs> uh, there are influences in, influencers in your church that if you get them coming and then they'll, they'll talk about it, other parents will go, oh, they're going to go. I guess we should go, right? They, whether they're community group leaders or, or, you know, women's Bible study table leaders, whatever the culture of your church is. Um, how to get those influencers is a tricky one, but let me give you a couple of suggestions. First of all, um, ask them to contribute in some way, right? Like if I say to Tammy, she, she's the cool parent in our church, I say, hey, Tammy, would you give a five-minute talk about how you do family devotions with your kids or, or what happened in your daughter's life? Are you going to come to that meeting? Yeah, you'll be there because now you said, yeah, I'll be there. So you're going to come and you're going to talk about it. And, and I'll say, well, yeah, hey, Tammy's going to come and she's cool. Uh, the other thing, just ask them, right? A lot of people will do a lot of things if you ask them. So if I say, Eric, would you bring your wife and, and come to this parent meeting? I really would love you to come. And you say yes, you, it's about 10 times more likely chance you're going to be there because you told me you would. So just a couple of ideas, but utilize those influencers. Um, make it worthwhile and meaningful. Uh, something that I have just felt more and more uh, is important when you meet with people. If people come... And everything that was communicated could have been communicated by an email. They're going to figure it out, and they're not going to come next time, right? Because people's time is valuable. But if you make it worthwhile in the sense that you say, hey, parents, I would really like to know what you think about this. Or, um, you know, this is what we've got going on, but we have a couple of different options where we could go. Could you help me make that decision? Or, you know, how could we improve? Suddenly they go, I'm glad I came because if I didn't, my voice wouldn't have been heard, right? If you present some kind of conflict, some kind of problem that needs to be solved, that can make it worthwhile and meaningful for every single person uh, that comes. Remember, their parents which means they have kids, okay? So if your parent meeting doesn't include any kind of consideration for childcare, duh, right? They all have kids, right? So this might look different based on your budget, based on your culture. Um, you may be able to hire uh, childcare or get volunteers, but if that's within the church, a lot of those people are the people you wanna be at that meeting, right? That's not a really easy problem to figure out. You know, some, sometimes uh, you have really responsible high schoolers. Uh, not everybody does, so make sure you check on your own high schoolers. Uh, you, can, you can get high schoolers to come, uh, college students. Uh, one creative idea that I think is really cool, like people that you met at your area meeting, what if you said, hey, what if we switched volunteers for our parent meetings? And I, I'll bring a team of 12 people, and we'll come take care of the kids at yours if the next week you come and take care of the kids at mine, right? Deal, deal. It's free, right, if it's volunteers or at least, you know, even sometimes if you're paying people, it's still hard to find them. So 
Uh, if nothing else, you know, maybe it's a smaller group and you can put on uh, Big Hero 6 in the next room and then just kind of watch them and make sure they don't leave. I don't know. That's what we do at my home group. We just, they're, they, they're not hurting each other. Um, so uh, also, Eric brought this up earlier, but feed them. If you feed them, they will come. Yes, food is good. Um, I think sometimes people think in terms of like, well, I was going to eat anyway. So they'll just come. But there's something about, there's something about food. It changes the attitude of, of the meat. It just changes the whole uh, demeanor of everybody. If they're eating, there's community. So, so I, like, I don't have a budget for food. Yeah. To feed that many parents. Potluck seem to win out, but I see in your eyes that's not the culture of your uh, uh, of your church. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's potluck. Yeah. 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 Right. Craig, you got, you got input? The, the question is, is it awkward to have people pay? Craig, what are you going to say? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe selling some food. I, 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 honestly, I'm a believer that feed them is important, even if you just put pretzels and water out, right? The fact that there's food kind of accomplishes a, a little bit. But you know what What I would do, and this is the thing they do for, like, every men's breakfast ever that seems to work, is don't tell them you're going to charge for it, right? Invite them for free and then say, hey, um, if you'd like to chip in some money for food, there's a, there's a pail on our basket on your table, which does a couple things. It keeps people from not coming because they don't have the money for it. And hopefully th that doesn't seem manipulative where they would go like, oh, shoot, I guess I have to pay now. A and the people who can pay, you know, maybe some families will drip in, dip, chip in $20 where others don't put in anything. That maybe that's a little riskier, like you're rolling the dice, but that's what I would do and just see what happens. I don't know. Or, or just, yeah, cake cake um so uh I, we have like three minutes uh questions thoughts comments nick i would say 90 minutes i would do 90 minutes uh the, the child care thing gets awkward after that i think if you can't communicate it in 90 minutes it probably needs to be split up into yeah as a maximum i wouldn't go less than 60 though I would do 60 to 90 minutes. Other thoughts? Sweet spot on time? And just to remind us, you, you kind of keep it low yeah. to get there. Yeah. You don't want to drive for 10 minutes. That's what I yeah, mean. right. And usually you call the insurance, make 15 minutes, no big deal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, honestly, for what, what I have in my head, I think if it was 15 minutes, I think you're selling yourself short. Like, I think that... Yeah, that's an email, right? Yeah, so I would say at least an hour, especially if it's an annual thing. And and if there's budget, if there's priority, maybe this is something that's two years down the road because it's going to take some budgeting. But make this an event, right? Make this like the most important part of your fall. Let me dump that Halloween carnival and do this instead. I, I don't want to stir anything up, guys. I don't want to stir anything up. <laughs> uh, two more minutes. Other questions or thoughts? Allison. Yeah, okay, so the question is, how do you help influence if you, parents if you don't have kids? I, my answer, maybe I'm wrong here, is you already do. You just need to pretend like you believe it, right? Like, I, I, honestly, having kids was the best thing I ever did for my own ministry, like, 
uh, like b to benefit myself. But there's a there's a process with that, with having kids. We can talk about that later. Um, <laughs> but uh, honestly, they don't see you as a non-parent. Some might they might some might make a comment like, oh, but you don't have kids. The majority of parents already think you know what you're talking about. And for a lot of what you're influencing, you do know what you're talking about, more than you give yourself credit for. But yeah, you don't have kids, and that was kind of what I was alluding to at my story at the beginning, like uh, answering that question, when, when's a good time to tell my kids about sex? I just had to come up with an answer, knowing that they valued my voice, even though I didn't value my voice. Nick? And, and it's not like this is a parenting class. Yes, it's right, it's not a parenting class. Yeah, you're right. But I do think you need to see parents as peers and expect them to see you as a peer, yeah. right? And and that's, that's, it's tough when you're young. It's very tough. But I don't think parents are that against seeing you as a peer. I think they want to see you as a peer. And this, even if that, maybe if that's not happening, this could help establish that. That you'd go like, hey, parents, let's talk about our kids, right? Like we're on the, on the same plane here. Yeah. Partly because I've, I've been really used to doing things with my parents, and I can imagine it would say, this is what my parents have done. Yeah. I really value them and treat them really good as a child. And to answer what Nick said, too, is a lot of times I don't think people are necessarily looking to us as, like, a, a parenting authority, um, but they're, we're, we're a representative of their kids. Right. And most of us think that we come up in, in a parent meeting, right, that, like this, we're saying this is kind of a informational kind of 101 thing, not yeah. like, Right, and they might bring up stuff about how to raise their kids, but keep it on on topic. That's a good point. Well, which can get really hard, even as the first guy that comes into college, because you know, when you're young, my parents and I think like most of the parents and I think even now, um, it's it's so easy to be like, you know, like parents are supposed to be teachers. Yeah. And they just lay that teacher like woman on their own. Exactly. Like, and they feel so much that they you are the professional that they look to. Yes, and you're so the professional. Yeah. Exactly. You know, kind of that thing. And that's how, like, when now I don't have, like, issue with them, like, on that front at all. Yeah. But, um, I, I, I did talk to parents, like, you do have to, it's not just you trying to wave it, but it's saying, no, listen, God has put me in this position. Yeah. So I'm, there is an authority aspect that he has given me. And so I just have to be confident in that. And that's not, good. Like, you know, try to, you know, come up with a, no, actually, I think, you know. Like, that's good. We got to wrap up, guys. Feel free to uh, stay in chat. Uh, there's just a break next and then the main session. Thank you, guys, and uh, have a good rest of the day.